the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. And so, dear friends, in the spirit of gratitude, we come before the altar of God, recognizing that we are sinners, and recognizing our daily need for the mercy of our God. We are confident that God hears us and answers us, and it is in that spirit we turn to him now, asking for his part. You were sent to hear the contrite of heart, A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say, let us lie in wait for the righteous one, who makes life inconvenient to us and opposes our actions, who reproaches us for our sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous one is God's son, God will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insults and torture, so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, 
for, according to what he says, he will be protected. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, Jesus asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus sat down called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. The Gospel passage that we have today is one that always gives me a great sense of delight because of the example that Jesus uses to draw us into a deeper relationship with our God and a deeper sense of growing in our, in our spiritual journey. He uses a child. But it's in the Gospel that Jesus also says that we must become like children. And I absolutely love this analogy. And maybe part of it is because I love Disneyland. One of my favorite places on earth. I love everything pretty much about Disney. And I know there's lots of people that don't and it's a big corporation and they have their issues, but I love the place. And a number of years ago I had the opportunity to meet up with my sister and brother-in-law and their two children, my niece and my nephew. And so we went to the park. And I was just totally taken with the, with the kids and their eyes and their attitude. And, and so, of course, the kids knew Uncle David had been in Disneyland more than a couple of times. <laughs> and so I said to them, you know, we, we should stand in this area because that's a really good place to view the fireworks. And the kids agreed. But one of the things also that you learn about Disneyland is that when you're standing waiting for the fireworks, that there are workers who are out there scanning the crowd to see who is a good candidate to be moved to what they call the preferred area. And the preferred area is directly in front of Cinderella's castle, and you don't have to stand, but you get to sit on benches. And so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, wouldn't that be beautiful if I could pull this off for the kids? And so I was encouraging them, just be good, just, just stay quiet, just, you know, it's all going to be okay. And lo and behold, a worker comes up and says, would your group like to be moved to the preferred seat? And I said, yes. And so there was the five of us get moved, which was beautiful because my nephew and my niece said, oh, like Uncle David, he pulls the punch. He's got, he's got pull here. <laughs> and we went and 
You know what? The fireworks are always good there. But what was most special for me was that I looked at the face of my nephew and my niece and I realized that nothing could ever take that moment away from me. The kids were doing something <clears throat> they had always dreamed of doing. And I got to be there. That's why the place is so special to me. Because it's not just my own nephew and niece that I've seen react to things or you know, to, to be able to witness children who almost live like they're in a dream world or they're in some sort of a magic kingdom. I see that in the faces of so many of those children. And so, for me, I recognize that, yes, not all of the children are going to be well behaved. And anybody who has been to a major park knows that. The days get long. It might be a hot day. The children might just be out of sorts. But what I see in their face is the one thing that Jesus calls us to, and that is hope. He asks us a question, and we heard it last week. Who do you say that I am? He is eliciting from them a sense of trusting. And so the reaction of them is that they want to give of themselves in such a way by which they can enter into the spirit of the mission. How do we enter into the spirit of the mission? And how that is, is that we become like children. We live in a world, and it's a fast-paced world, and it's fast-paced even with information. We're always so quick to want to, to find out things. I'm a bad one for that. I'll forget the name of, of an actor or an actress or, a, or somebody that was big in the sporting world, and I gotta check what was the name, what was the name. We're just so driven by this. Instead, what the Lord is drawing us into is a sense of letting go of the fact that I somehow have to have the answers or somehow that I have to have everything in control. But instead, it is to have the childlike trust and that awe. The look on my face, in my eyes, that is showing that there is something grand that is happening. That before me is the glory of God. There was on Facebook, and I don't know whether this was true or not, but the story was lovely and it's very fitting today, is that there was a story told by a young mother whose son was, I think, in maybe grade one or grade two, and was talking about that he had a twin at school. And so the mom was pursuing this. What do you mean you have a twin? Oh, well, you know, my friend, he's, he's my twin. And so the mom thought, with all good will, she said, you know what? I'm going to go, and I'm going to get the boys matching shirts so that the twins can truly be twins. And she did that, sent her son dressed in his shirt, and sent the other shirt for the twin to wear. And the school teacher took the picture and sent it to the mom. And the twins were there with their matching shirts on. One a Caucasian boy, the other an African American boy. But they were twins. And people, that is what Jesus means, calling us to be child. I know it may have escaped you, the opening prayer. The older I get and the longer I'm a priest, the more important the opening prayer becomes. But here's what our opening prayer said today. It says, O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, 
upon love of you and love of our neighbor. Every law that is sacred is founded upon the love of God and the love of neighbor. And that we can learn from our children. You see, I've yet to be in Disneyland watching a four or a five year old, even watching adults for that matter. And I've never seen a four year old ask their mom or dad, Mom, how much does the Disney Corporation generate every year in sales? I've never heard a kid question them about, is the Disney Corporation a just corporation? Do they pay their workers a just wage? Do they support good organizations? Never heard that. What I've witnessed is a young child whose eyes are filled with an indescribable indescribable sense of, of being overwhelmed at the sight of Mickey Mouse. Why is it that a child can do that, but we cannot be overwhelmed by the sight of God in our world? You know, listen to our letter of St. James. He says, where there is envy and selfish ambition, then there will be disorder and wickedness. You know, when we look at children, you know, violence from children against children, and unfortunately there is some of that, is not something that is innate to their creation, it's a learned behavior. And who is it learned from? It's learned from adults. We talk about racism, we talk about bigotry. Children do not come out of the womb knowing that. And the mission is dependent upon us being able to let go of that to where our trust and our love and our energy is like that of a child. It's like children, and I made this, mentioned this before, it's like children in the weeks leading up to Christmas. I love to hear them. Oh, I know Santa Claus is going to bring me that. They're so hopeful. And yet what we succumb to is a sense of this, this deadness. That somehow there is no joy in my living. To be the greatest, Jesus says, you must become servant. He, he inverts everything. And as he, he invites us to tell him who he is, he is giving to us our own identity if we will surrender ourselves like the little child. Because as he says, whoever welcomes the child welcomes not just me, but the one who sent me. We place in our midst God. I always love it when they say, you know, to become childlike is a beautiful thing. And mark my words here, it, it's not about becoming childish, although I must admit that there's many days I appreciate being childish. <laughs> it's childlike. Those times of going to bed knowing everything would be okay. Those times when we knew that, you know what? A kiss and a band-aid, that was all that mattered. There was knowing that dad was Superman. There was knowing that mom could do everything. Is that what my relationship is with my God and with the people I'm called to share faith with? Do I remain hopeful? 
in situations that others are quick to judge as being hopeless? Do I share joy even when I may not have a whole bunch of joy inside? Do I look to the world with hope? Or do I look to the world with defeat in my mind? Do I want to live? Or have I stopped living? Do I want to love? Or have I stopped loving? Because to me, as long as there's a child that looks up at a character in some big park and magic shines through their eyes, then I know that God is in control. And from their joy comes my desire to live. I always say to people, you know, if you're, in a, if you're in the space where things just aren't going well, you know, trust me, get on a plane and go to Los Angeles. <laughs> go visit Mickey Mouse. Because you'll find him. But you'll find a whole lot more. You'll find a restoration of your own childhood. You'll find in it that ability to hope again and to know that everything will be well. Again, an opening prayer. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you, and of our neighbor. Grant to us that by keeping these laws of love, we may merit to attain eternal life. And that, my friends, is worth hoping for. For church leaders, may the Spirit of God be upon them that they might shepherd the people with the tender heart of Christ the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and all those in authority, may God's Spirit guide their minds, hearts, and deeds so that they act for the greater good and enable peace, justice, and fairness to prevail. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with or who have left the practice of the faith, through our words, actions, and inspiration, may they experience the warmth of God's yearning for their return. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need, those who are troubled or despairing, those who worry about employment, those who struggle to see their way in life, and all who are treated unfairly. May they never lose hope in the generosity of God's justice and mercy. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, and especially those near the end of their earthly lives, may they and those who care for them find comfort in the certainty of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased, may they experience great joy, great rejoicing in sharing the victory of Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all that you give to us. Give to us hearts that will love, and give to us a deep desire to serve you by serving our brothers and sisters. Hear us as we pray and grant to us what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, in my sacrifice on the earth may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all souls. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs to these heavenly mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Therefore, Father most merciful, 
we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to such your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now take an opportunity to share Christ's peace with us. Peace.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.